they're ready for me. I'm slouching. Hey, so I wanna give you my absolute favorite Lightroom tips, things I do not only to speed up my workflow, but to make the photos look better. And if you're caught in a place where light has gone to die, this will save you. Alright, so here I have a bunch of photos where we are going to be talking about different things to do with all of these photos. I'm going to start off, let's just start at the top. Some of these tricks you might know, some of them not. I know for me, there are just certain things in Lightroom you simply don't learn for a while. So some of these might be basic for you. Some of them you might already be ahead in. Now, if you know me and my work, I do tend to like to start with one of my presets. It's not really a style for me as much as it is just the things I typically do to a photo, which I guess is a style. Anyway, I usually do either joyfully simple or fresh and clean, but for this one, I'm actually going to go with bright and vibrant. It has a lot of corrections and it just things I normally do. Uh, you can see the settings on this side. I'm not trying to hide them, but of course you can grab all my presets in the link below or at breathe your passion, presets at breatheyourpassion.com. I'm not editing this, so you were just getting this out of here. <laughs> all right. So one thing in this photo, trick number one is adjusting color. Now you have color grading. I'm not going to dive into this. I do want to talk about what you can do here in this HSL. Now this particular trick only works when you've got very distinct cool colors that are not the same as the skin tones. It doesn't work if you've got colors that you want to change that are the same as skin tones. I've got a silhouette of these guys here, so I'm pretty fortunate. I'm going to exaggerate that silhouette by bringing down my shadows and my blacks. I can also bring up the whites a little bit, but I don't want to go too crazy. So what I want to do is mess in hue only. Now you could come over here and just move around where you think the color is you want to change. Personally, I like to click on this little button right here, go to my color and bring it up or down. Now the fun thing about this is your creativity is just completely unlimited, of course, but on top of it, if you're doing something like a wedding, you can change the colors to like match the bridesmaids dresses, which in this case were more on the pink side. So I know that's purple, that's as far as I think I can pull it at this point, but that's pretty fun. So we can start there. And then of course you can beef up the saturation, the luminosity, you know, I could even just totally take it out, which looks a little bit interesting. All right. I will warn you when you play around with this trick. Oh my goodness. Here's the luminance going brighter or darker. I think that's about where I want to be. You know, when you start playing around with this, the sky's the limit. So fair warning, you might get yourself all types of caught up. I actually like this kind of greenish look right there, it's about where I want it to be. Let's saturate it a bit so it matches what's going on. And now I've got something completely different. I'm just gonna finish this off by messing with the crops. I'm coming over to my transform and the vertical so that I actually have straight lines. I do typically hit constraint crop and then actually straighten it out. I think we're pretty good. Yeah, that actually it's pretty good right there. And then I'm gonna cut that out right about there. So that's pretty fun. That is trick number one. Trick number two, this is another wedding photo. I am getting to the portraits, guys. I know the wedding stuff is so boring to everyone here. <laughs> it's only how I feed my children, but yeah, super boring. Uh, let's just go with Joyfully Simple. That's one of my basic ones I use a lot. Um, and what I want to do with this, we've got this super blown out sky. Now it doesn't look bad. It doesn't bother me here. I know it bothers a lot of people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my gradient tool. This tool is so underutilized in Lightroom, but I'm just going to go to blue sky. And here I'm going, I could start all the way at the top and have just a very slight gradual. You literally don't even see it. So I'm just going to delete that. Or it could come to the bottom and this is where I want it to be. Now I do have to be careful about doing anything here, but Let's go ahead and just exaggerate this with the exposure button. So just depending on how blown out your sky is, is where you'll start seeing this. So it already has the blue sky elements in it. You can see I've basically blued it down and up the saturation a little bit. This actually is a photo that might not work as nicely with the gradient tool. So let's go ahead. 
I'll show you a gradient tool later. And let's just do the same thing, but we're gonna paint it in. So I have the same blue sky setting, and instead I'm just going to paint it in. I'll probably do some erasing in a second. Let's open it up right here. You can also hit, by the way, auto mask, which I realized I didn't do. So that, that will help with all these trees and all the things sticking out, very important. So I'm just gonna paint this in. And then I'm going to lower my exposure. There we go. This is much better blended in much more nicely with the exception of my edges right here. It's just showing off my chromatic aberration because I shot this. What did I shoot this at? Yeah, F2. All right, so I'm just going to go to my erase button and let's get some of that out of there. It's definitely a little bit of blending. You'll end up messing around here a little bit so you can't get this haloing effect. See how that looks like I got a halo around here. It's definitely what I have right now. Um, so I don't want that obviously. So we can mess with that a little bit just to smooth it out. I'm not going to go crazy. Like I said, I'm not editing this. You were just here with me. All right. That's about right. Let's go back to brush a, that's how you start painting again, essentially. And then your flow here, right there, that's how intense, uh, like the opacity kind of of it. So I'm just gonna go around, add a little bit more, not a lot, just to try to get rid of that haloing effect that you saw. All right, so that was pretty good to me. Just your little like before and after, no sky, sky, no sky, sky. All right, so you can add it in. And again, I would mess around with this a little bit more, but. Let's move on, I've got more tricks. All right, so for this one here, what I wanna do is go back to that gradient tool and I'm gonna use my sun flare adjustment. This one is the most fun because if you have gone somewhere where you've got a little bit of sun flare, great. But if you're in a place where you don't have it at all, which I'm gonna show you also, it just brings life to the image. But this is a good one where it's just going to complement the image because the sun is already coming from that way and now we just made it look like we had a little bit of extra flare. That's straight out of camera. Maybe I should put like some kind of, I don't know, let's go with fresh and clean. No, I just like it straight out of camera. Isn't that nice when that happens? Now we'll do joyfully simple. All right, soften things up a little bit. All right, so that's it. Now you could do just one side with that gradient with that sun flare or you can come in bring it around on the other side and we're all types of sun flare where you can have the sun come straight from the ground because why not? <laughs> you can go crazy with that, obviously. But, you know, honestly, it doesn't look that bad to me. Just had a ton of different options. So there's your before and there's your after. All right, I don't want sun coming from below. But, you know, it is a possibility, right? Okay, now I feel better. All right, so that's sun flare. I'm gonna show it to you on a darker picture. Actually, let's just do that now. I'm gonna combine this right here, this photo, and give you two tricks. So trick number one is going to be, I, I don't know where you're from, but here in Jersey, these evergreens, it's like a thing. We can't get rid of them. And it's just where light simply goes to die. And even if I put on, you know, my preset, even if I come over here and I bring up my shadows, it just looks blech to me, at least to me, you know, it's not, doesn't have much life. Maybe it's because I've lived in Jersey too long and I don't like the color green. So what I do, and I actually need to create a new preset for this. Maybe I already have by the time you're watching this, you should check it out. I'm going to come over here to the hue and I'm going to take my greens and bring them to yellow. And I don't know what it is about this. Maybe I just like the look of dead trees, but to me, I think this just pops. It adds a little bit more warmth that I like. And it's one trick, one trick, just bringing down that hue. Now you can tweak this and definitely go into luminance and bring up your green luminance. You could bring up the yellows, but you do have to be careful because that is going to affect your skin tones. And then of course you can mess around with your saturation. I don't know how crazy, you know, that's a style thing, how much you want that. Uh, I did put a little bit too much of the luminance on here. Still want them to kind of be the center there. So to me, that just brought life to it. Like look at what it was before, not a fan and then afterwards. And then on top of this, this is a huge trick when it comes to if they were standing on green. Guys, you ever get the green skin tones here because they're standing on green or there's green all the way around? This is how you get rid of them. This is how you get rid of those nasty green tones. You can see how much better their skin looked, watch. Right? It did take away some of those tones. All right, so that's your next trick, but I wanna couple that with, I want to warm this photo up just slightly. Yeah. 
I want to couple that with what we just did with the gradient and the sun flare, because that's just going to bring this to a whole new level. So right about there. Now, if you think that's too bright, you know, you can just hover over here till you are hovering over your point and you're going to hit option on a Mac anyway, and you can make it go. Oops, hold on. Let me get that. Is it option? Yeah, option. We can darken it, the effect. Do, do, do. Or we can raise the effect up by going the other way. Don't know if you knew that, but it's a good trick. Or you can come over here and you can just see the amount and, and move it around. But just that little bit of extra sun flare. And again, if you want to do on both sides or even straight from the top, you can do that. You can come to the bottom, just adding a little bit of haze. But look where that went just with combining two of those tricks, especially moving that green hue over to yellow, kills the green out of the skin tones in case you had them. We went from this to that in seconds, huge. Okay, speaking of skin tones, let's head to this photo. This is a typical technique here, right? Like you've seen this before, we backlit her. So we didn't wanna to totally blow out everything back here. I'm just going to throw on my lightenary preset. You know, you could do something like this where you just lighten everything up. But to me, I don't want that because I still want my highlights back there. So I'm just going to throw on my Joyfully Simple. It helps smooth skin tones, that one, because I mess around with the clarity and stuff. And I'm going to come down to my luminance tool right here. You can see I'm here for a while. You know, I might actually mess around. Hmm, should we mess around with the color raid? Yeah, we'll do this too, but let me go to luminance. So one thing that you can do, and again, we are looking at the photo as a whole, we can come right over to luminance and find a mid-tone on her skin. Oops, I gotta click my selector tool right here. Selector tool, luminance, selector tool. Find a midpoint on her skin and click and drag up. And now I am just pulling up that part of her skin tone. You don't wanna go crazy, because if I go crazy, it's gonna start looking weird, right? That's actually crazy down and then crazy up, but you can see exactly what I am messing with right here. So slight, slight bit guys, don't go crazy. Actually, I actually have to let go of that because I was freaking out my, my system here by doing that. All right, let's do that again. Let's just brighten it up a little bit right there. And then you can also go to some of the darker parts of her skin tone and bring that up right around there. There we go, and it's just bringing it up. Now you don't want to do it too much. Uh, I think I was pushing it. If you see it coming all the way over here to like 100, you probably got a problem. So back it off a little bit. Then you can come to your saturation. You can saturate till you get the right skin color that you're looking for, so you're not washing them out because you don't want to do that either. You can also mess around with the hue if it's becoming a little bit too red or too orange. I think I actually want to get some of the red out of here. Yeah, so right about there. Now here's where you can come also into your highlights and just mess around with your highlights. So I wanna do this here because the highlights that I have behind her now are not as yellow as I want them to be. I want them to be a little bit more yellow and to look like the warm sun. So I'm gonna go ahead and just on my highlights, which is a large part of the photo, all right, go with the um warmer tone here and you just want to mess around with this you can see i can bring the highlights down and actually see them a little bit better but this is just a good way to balance out that photograph and balance out your your highlights and your light on one side and the other of her because i did have a reflector i believe i was holding it you can see it right in her eyeball let me zoom it in there we go you can see me holding it but it just wasn't wasn't doing enough. Now I could go into Photoshop and go crazy with that. All right. But that's option one. Now, after I've already told you option one, let me show you a different option. So you could keep going here and go into your local adjustment brush, this one right here. Now we're going to go crazy with this local adjustment brush in a second, but let me just show you the basic function of this dodging and burning, which in uh, Lightroom, you already, already, I don't know what that accent is. You already have some, uh, things that you can do for dodging and burning. I have uh, different ones here, see burn dodge, and then I've got my exposure ones. I actually made one called contour. Um, I don't sell this one yet, but whatever, I'll let you look at it. Um, so I did this to just bring out the shadows of what I already have. So if you know anything about contouring with makeup, 
This is really just helping me kind of paint on the places people typically like to contour that'll highlight cheekbones, jawline, things like that. I do like putting it over brighter parts of skin tones that I find a little bit uh, distracting or maybe they're pulling away from her uh, face because I don't want to pull away from the attention from her face. So I'm going to go ahead and mess with that. So there you go. That's what that looks like. And then you can do the opposite. We're going to hit new and I'm just going to go, let's go to light and shadows. That's a good one right there. Uh, and then contour the other way. So we're brightening up the parts that we want to pop and it's just good old fashioned dodging and burning like we used to do in the dark room. Uh, but now we're doing it in light room. All right. So little slight differences. Let me just show you that's before all the contouring. See how it just, it changes the shape of her face really. And then this is where we started and that's where we ended up a little bit too much on the clarity slider. I think lost a little bit of it and you will definitely lose a bit of texture when you're messing around with your hue. So keep that in mind. All right, the last thing that I want to show you is going to be those local adjustment brushes, but we are going to go crazy with these. So this is a gorgeous photo. I love Brooke. Let's go ahead and just put on a little bit too crazy. Let's just do fresh and clean. Nah, yeah, fresh and clean. All right, it did overexpose her a little bit, so I'm just gonna fix that. There is not one preset for everything, guys. All right, it just went too much on the whites. There we go, all right, so let's leave it right about here. I'm gonna bring down the blacks a little bit, give it that pop. So this looks great, but wanna do some things here uh, with her face. So local adjustment brushes, these are your best friends. These are how you fine tune what you do in Lightroom. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to soften skin. And this one actually right here, I have to update that preset because I had that down. The one that you get on my website is correct. I'm um, just gonna go over her skin and slightly soften it. It's not a lot. I don't like doing a ton of retouching. I do like doing this on her lips a little bit, under her eyes, we'll kind of get to that in a second. You know what, I'm going to do a little bit more than I normally would do, just so you can really see this on YouTube. All right, let's pump up the amount right about there, all right, as opposed to down here where you can see more of the texture. Pop it up here and we're gonna smooth it out just a little bit. My computer is lagging ever so slightly because I'm doing a screen grab, so sorry. All right, and then we're gonna hit new and I'm gonna go to remove dark circles. And again, you can copy these things if you want to or you can just grab the presets because that'll save you time. All right, so we're gonna go Underneath it. Oh, you know what my problem is? My flow is down. That's my problem. Now we know. I knew there was something wrong. All right. So there we go. All right. Now you can see the under eye circles and just, just those two things, soften skin and under eye. Look at the difference we got guys. That's a huge difference. And it's not crazy. Again, not going crazy. This is one of my favorites punch lashes. I do that next. It just comes over. I'm going to darken her eyebrows, darken those lashes. So they really pop. You know, it's better than having uh, someone with extensions, lash extensions, because it, ca it casts a shadow in their eye, which is super frustrating. All right, new, let's go to saturate eyes. She has these gorgeous blue eyes. So of course I'm going to enhance them just a little bit. We don't have to go crazy, just saturate them a little. And then whiten eyes, we're just gonna get rid of some of the veins, any discoloration slight, not crazy. And whiten teeth that we don't need to use. I do have one here that's called hair shine. Is it here? You know what? I think I have it online. Oh, that was the other thing. Why I'm holding a phone in the thumbnail here is because these are all available. You can do this on Lightroom mobile, or you can do this on your desktop. So you can do the one. I do have hair shine. This is not one and that's in my kit, but you can see the settings right there. All right. So I'm going to put this over her it kind of like hides flyaway hairs. This was a little bit too intense for me, so let's back that off. Uh, it hides flyaway hairs, but also raises, as you can see, the whites. Um, it lowers the highlights as to hide any grays, but it raises the whites so that you get more of like the highlights happen in there. All right, 
anything else that we want to do? I don't think so. I think that's perfect. I guess the last thing I could do is contour her and just emphasize the shadows that we already created. All right, and again, kind of throw some shadow on any other skin tones that might be distracting. That looks good. You can contour kind of around the top here and then on the sides of the nose. Yes, I know that's too much. Don't worry. I see it, guys. I see it. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll just come over to erase and just erase the portions on her nose because that was too crazy. And this one right here was not helpful. So we'll just take that off. Okay. All right. Ready for the before and after? I know you're excited. All right. There's a before. There's the after. How much did we clean that up? There's just one thing I see that I missed in my softening skin was right here on the side and above her eyebrow. So right there. Okay. Now from there, you can go to your healing tool and of course, get rid of any blemishes. You could get rid of those flyaway hairs if you want to. Flyaway hairs I don't find as easy to get rid of in Lightroom. Should we give it a try? Should we just give it a try? So we just put it all to the test. All right, let's just do it. You know what? Let me zoom in. Let's get in here. All right, here we go. You can hear my computer start working. <laughs> All right. Let's just see how this does. I really don't know how this is going to do. Okay, it didn't do a horrible job. I'm not mad. I'm not totally mad. Let's see if we can get the rest of this. There comes the pinwheel of death. You're going to stay with me, aren't you guys? All right. I should have just left this alone. I should have been like, I'm just not going to retouch this part because you guys don't want to watch it. Uh, one of the easiest ways, by the way, I find when I'm trying to do big spots like this is to just let it take it from the forehead. And you'll find that it smooths it out a little bit better. Did I pull the correct thing? No, I didn't. I was looking for this. Oh, you know, I did pull the correct thing. All right, we need to do this. All right, so now we're a little bit better, right? The flyaway hairs, I guess right here. I'm not going to keep going crazy because you guys get the idea. But let's take a look at our fabulous before and after. So that's it. Those are all your Lightroom tricks. There's your before and after on each one of them. And I hope I taught you something new, something that you can use. Uh, and like I mentioned, you can grab the presets that I use throughout this, not just for uh, starting off with editing the whole photo, but for the gradients that we used for the blue sky, for the golden hour that you see here, all of the brushes that I used for retouching faces, all of those. All of those are available at presetsstepbreathepression.com or you can sit around here and uh, try to copy every single one of those settings. Have fun either way. <laughs> Glad you're here. Oh, let's just give you the full look. Can't stop there. Bam, bitches. Bitches.